We hear a lot about GERD or acid reflux on TV these days, even to the extent of suggesting that you can eat what you want and then just take a proton pump inhibitor like Nexium, Prilosec, or Protonix, it and gives, you'll be okay. It gives you the idea that you just go out and eat the whole pizza and don't have to worry about it because we've got the answer for you. Do we? Yeah, or will you be okay? That's right. <laughs> well, if you've listened to us or you listen to the side effects during the commercials, you know that you aren't supposed to take them for more than a short period of time, or you can develop complications, things like osteoporosis and dementia and mineral deficiency, and more that we're going to be going over. A new study now shows that this class of drugs can lead to an increased risk of heart attacks and double the risk of death in people who already have heart disease and take the proton pump inhibitors. <laughs> It's crazy. What's the recommended <laughs> amount of time for people to take the proton pump inhibitors? About eight weeks. That's all it's approved for. But doctors, mostly our gastroenterologists, don't see why it, uh, they can't use it all the time because they don't have anything else. And some people take well. them for years. Yes, they do. And the problem is, is it causes all these th these symptoms that are really serious. And you would think it'd be fine if you just watch the television ads that are out there because nobody's listening to the side effects that are usually set at the speed of light, so you hardly can hear them. We also can't absorb things like calcium and iron and magnesium and, and what else? And B12. Oh, yeah, B12. Right. You can't make acid, uh, so you can't digest your food right. You're at a higher risk for developing C. diff enterocolitis, which is a horrible, usually hospital-acquired infection, because or pneumo and get pneumonia. Because the acid helps to kill some of these bacteria. Exactly. Now, there were some studies, Vicki, that were published in the Public Library of Science in June, in, July, in June of 2015, and they reviewed 3 million patient records from 1994 to 2012. And then what they found is what you said, that 16, there was a 16% increase in the risk of heart attacks, which is no small number. And for those people who already had heart disease, the risk of dying doubled. You know, this is the, highest, the third highest selling drug in the world. Yeah, it's incredible. There's like, what, 50 million people that take a proton pump inhibitor. So we're looking at, what, one-sixth of the population is using these things? It's another ploy by the pharmaceutical industry to get you to buy their drugs because you have to remember, why are they in business? The first reason is, to, is a return on investment for their stockholders. The second reason is they're supposed to be providing a service that doesn't have any conflicts of interest that's supposed to help us. But that doesn't always happen. Okay, now people used to take H2 blockers, things mm -hmm. like Tegamet and Zantac. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And they were replaced by the proton pump inhibitors because they're more they're effective. Easy, yeah, they're, they block acid better, but if, what you're doing is just putting yourself at risk for more complications. And voila, here we go again. We're looking at a drug that comes out that's not as well studied as it should be, and then we find out that it has far-reaching effects. It even affects people who you know, are going to be getting heart attacks or dying from it if they already have heart disease at a, at a risk that's doubled. It's the nonsense. Other, and the other thing that they found, that it can block the effect of Plavix, which is a blood thinner. Yeah. So you actually wind up taking away from, and maybe that's part of the reason why some of these people are dying at a rate that's much higher. So you can't help but ask yourself, what else don't we know about them? Well, that's you know? right. And I mean, there, there are times when a drug is taken off the market 50 years later. And I can give you some examples of that. It's, I mean, it's, it's a terrible thing, like the drug Darvon, uh, which was used as the pain reliever in the hospital, as, as the main pain reliever, was finally taken off the market last year. Why? Because it turns out it causes fatal heart uh, arrhythmias. It's sort of like, really? I mean, so we, we should be tightening up our, our FDA rules so that we're only using drugs as the last resort as opposed to doing lifestyle medicine, which is what we should be doing in the first place so we don't even need to do those things rather than having the mentality of thinking, well, I want to eat that whole pizza, so I'm going to go take my H2 blocker or I'm going to take my proton pump inhibitor before I go. Well, that's kind of a ridiculous way to look at things. But well, people, you know, they encourage that 
point of view exactly uh, when you watch some of the television commercials so what would be some suggestions that you could make to people that have acid reflux that might be natural and actually make a lot more sense one in particular is licorice root extract it's called DGL because it stands for deglycerizinated licorice root that's why we call it DGL nobody much can say it and what does licorice root extract do it basically makes a thicker mucus that coats the stomach and the esophagus so that when you have an irritation there, the acids in the stomach or the bile in the stomach that is refluxed there doesn't cause, a, doesn't cause all the pain. Now, that's safe. It doesn't have any side effects unless you don't like the taste of it. And it does some other good things. It increases the life of the cells. It increases the, uh, the, the benefits that you get in, in terms of uh, the cells being circu- getting more circulation. And, and it helps uh, in terms of keeping the acid from eroding into the stomach lining. And you can get this without a prescription at a health you can get it a, You can get it over the counter, for sure. So how do people take it? How often? Well, what I prescribe is two uh, before meals and at bedtime. So it gives it... Like 20 minutes before yeah, meals. Yeah, 15, 20 minutes before you eat and at bedtime. So that you coat the stomach with this thick mucus uh, that in a natural sort of way uh, that protects it against the things we were talking about. So when we're well, thinking, is there anything else though that people? Could I think do? that's enough right there. Probiotics? probiotics not a bad idea for anybody because it maintains more of a normal flora in the gut. But we're looking really at the stomach, and the esophagus. It does it hardly has any microbes in it, just a few. But it's something that I think is a good idea as well. So when we're looking at at hiatal hernias with reflux esophagitis, we shouldn't be just thinking about using the what's the easiest thing to use, which is of course what our our gastroenterologists are doing is using the, these drugs that are in these families. We should be trying to first find out why people are having so much trouble, get to the underlying cause, and then use lifestyle as the first treatment. And then if that doesn't work as effectively as you'd like, then you can be looking at things like licorice root extract. <laughs>